So you're at a fancy restaurant or you're having dinner with friends and they're like, you have to try this wine. And so you take it, you slug it back and you're like, I think that was quite nice. But can I actually help you learn how to appreciate that wine a little bit better with a quick tutorial? Five minutes, let's give it a try. And if you do stick around to the end, I will show you what's behind this brown bag, the wine that I will be tasting and its special significance to me. Tasting wine is a basic three-stage process, five stages if you're a little bit fancy. Pretty much look, smell, and then taste. And so for the fancy five-stage approach, you're dividing the smell into the first nose and the smelling after you swirl the glass. Finally, the last stage in the fancy five-stage approach is is spitting at the end. So the first thing you do when you pick up a glass of wine is you want to look at it. And the best way to do that is to tilt it at a 45 degree angle and just look through the wine. And essentially what you're doing here is appreciating the color and looking at the intensity and appearance. When you are drinking white wines, most white wines are gonna be lemon in color. And when it comes to red wines, most of them are ruby red. What I mean by intensity of appearance is how see-through the wine is. The best way to assess that is to put a piece of paper underneath your wine and try to read that piece of paper through your wine. If you can easily read through the piece of paper, the wine is pale. If you can't, it's deep. And if it's somewhere in between, it's gonna be medium. Now the second step is smell. And to me, this is probably the most important bit. And I said, if you're fancy, you might want to split this up into two stages. So stage number one is without swirling the glass. Just put your nose into the glass and without inhaling, allow the aromas to slowly go into your nose. This is a really great way to get those really delicate aromas. And that will also start giving you an indication of what kind of wine you're drinking. And what you wanna do at this point is give it a little swirl. Now if you don't have practice with swirling the glass in the air, put the glass on your table and just learn how to swirl whilst the glass is on your table. Now that you've kind of aerated the wine a little bit, take another smell and this time start inhaling. So when we are talking about smelling the wine, you're going to be looking for three main aromas. Primary aromas, secondary aromas, and finally if the wine is a little bit older, you'll get tertiary aromas. So I kind of think of it if a wine is more than four to five years old, that's when you might start getting tertiary aromas. Now when you think of primary aromas, and these come from the grape, typically we think about them in groups or in clusters. So when you're dealing with white wine, your main clusters are going to be floral, citrus, stone fruit, and tropical. And when you're thinking about red wine, well then you can get herbal or herbaceous aromas. So that's like mint or eucalyptus. You can get spicy aromas like white pepper or black pepper. And typically you will have red fruit clusters or black fruit clusters or a combination of those. Now that you've assessed the primary aromas, you're going to be looking for some secondary aromas. So these are the winemaker influences. When you are dealing with red wine, it's pretty straightforward. Most of the secondary aromas will basically come from oak if the wine was matured in oak. You might be expecting things like cedar, vanilla, chocolate, coffee, smoke, even charred wood, sometimes even coconut. When we are talking about white wine, the secondary aromas can come from three sources. And we won't go into too much detail at this point. But the first source is something called malolactic fermentation, and that will give you the creamy dairy aromas. Second source is resting on lees, and that will give you the bready biscuity aromas. Third source is also oak, where you can get some of the aromas that we spoke about before. If the wine is more than four to five years old and it has been stored correctly, then the wine in the bottle will start developing some tertiary aromas. And that will be developing a lot of complexity. When we're talking about white wines, you can get dried fruit, nutty aromas, and sometimes even mushroom aromas, like in certain Chardonnays. And when we were talking about red wine, depending on the variety, you might get savory, earthy aromas. Forest floor is an acceptable term for a tertiary aroma. And you might also get some dried fruit. Now there are also faulty aromas that we're not gonna talk about too much, but the main one that you need to think about is probably wet cardboard. So that effectively means that the wine is corked. Now that you've done your look and you've done your smell and you might even have done your double smell, this is where you taste the wine. Now, if you are wondering how much to pour into your mouth, you pretty much want a swallow full. Now, when I think about taste, now you're pretty much confirming a lot of the aromas that you have already smelled. But the benefit of tasting is that you're getting a sense of the structural characteristics of your wine. So you're getting a sense of the sweetness. You're getting a sense of the acidity. So that is effectively how mouthwatering it is. You're getting a sense of the tannins, so that's the mouth sucking effect. You're getting a sense of the alcohol, and that is the burn. And you're getting a sense of the body, so that is how heavy the wine feels in your mouth. The last thing that you will experience when you're tasting is you will get a sense of the length, the finish. And you can tell a great quality wine by the fact that the really pleasant aromas will last really long. <laughs> Oh my God, will last really long on the palate. Now, if you want to get a better sense of the aromas of the wine in your mouth, I'm going to teach you a little trick. The way to aerate the wine in your mouth is to pretend that you are giving someone a kiss and you bring your lips like this. What you want to do once you're in that position is you will gently open your mouth 
and try to gently suck in air. And effectively what will happen is that the wine will bubble away in your mouth. What that does is that releases even more aromas. Now your last step in tasting wine is actually spitting. I find that spitting works best when you are very intentional about it and you are committed to the process. Now I promised that I would reveal the wine that I'm tasting today and it is behind this brown bag and let's see what we're tasting and I'll explain why it's significant to me. All right, here it is. Hopefully you can see that okay. This is the Cullen Wines 2020 Cabernet Sauvignon Merlot. And the reason why I chose this specific wine is that I am currently in the Margaret River region in the Southwest of Western Australia. And the really cool thing about this region is that the first three founders of the first three vineyards in this region were actually all medical doctors, just like me. Interestingly enough, Dr. Kevin Cullen, who co-founded with his wife Cullen Wines, was actually a GP, also like me. And he was a GP who was working in Bustleton where I'm actually doing a locum shift as a GP at the moment. And he was in love with Bordeaux blends, which I am also in love with. Remember guys, it's a simple three-stage process. Look, smell, taste, or double smell, and spit at the end. And remember to be mindful of healthy limits when drinking alcohol. Otherwise, good luck.